Dust build 1.7 isn't balanced. The balance is so bad in some areas that players cannot use the weapons or tools they've spent most of their skill points on. At this point, rail rifles and tanks are among the biggest cause of complaint. Not the only ones by any means. Shotguns feature in this list, as do suits, and even entire playstyles, such as scouting. It's a long list. The community is calling for balance, well, most of them anyway. We will always have those players who like imbalance. They want to win. Fairness is not a concept they value. You've seen these disappointing members of our community ranting on the forum, or recalling tanks and getting another to avoid the cooldown on their triple stack damage modded redline tank, or even using the keyboard strafe bug, or dropping uplinks in places where they know they cannot be destroyed. You cannot stop these people, they will always find a way, it's how they play, any advantage, win at all costs, it's not the fight they enjoy, it's the victory. If you are the dropship pilot who thinks that swarms do not need adjustment, then you're one of them. And if you're a tanker who tell AV to get good, then you're also one of them. They're also the people who flood my game mail inbox with abuse when I report their favourite exploit to CCP for a fix. But we have a problem. Most of the calls for balance and the solutions people present will cause even more problems, vehicles and AV being the best example of this. Many are upset and asking for changes that will make things worse, much worse and this is based on their misunderstanding. The purpose of this video is to show you why we need to be careful. Now I warn you, I'm about to start waffling on and pointing at pie charts and graphs. I'll do my best to keep it simple, but the issue isn't simple. This is tricky stuff, but if you stick with me, you'll be a step closer to making sure we stop broken mechanics like 1.7's tanks getting into the game, and stop dropships being broken by the attempts to fix tanks. More importantly, Knowledge can stop the forum loudmouths from breaking the game more due to their lack of understanding. So get a cup of tea, or since we're all gamers, a few litres of Mountain Dew, although I think I'd recommend a beer for this one, and let me hit you with some knowledge. Look at this clip. By the way, I spool so the video catches the health changes for you to see, not because I don't tank. I'm in a militia tank with no bonus to my damage output. The base damage of my turret is 1,450 hit points. The ship is a viper with no hardness. He has 1,900 shields and 1,065 armor. Now I hit him dead on. Notice the efficiency rating is 109%. His shields drop to 305 and his armor remains the same. This means he lost 1,595 hit points. With only 305 shields and 1,065 armor left, that's only 1,370 hit points it'll take to kill him. That's way below my damage output. He's a dead man. I hit him a second time. Notice the efficiency rating is the same, which means I'm hitting his ship with exactly the same amount of damage as the first shot. Now he has 9 HP left. Wait, he's still alive? How? Surely I hit him for 1,595, just like the first time, right? No. I hit for 1,361. That's 234 less damage, even though he started with much less shields than before. How is it possible to hit for less when he was weaker? The clue is in the new efficiency rating, but that's only part of the answer, the simple part. My point is that our intuitive feeling in this situation is to look at his hit points and our known damage and say, well, it's a two shot to kill that dropship. When we look at just the numbers, we balance with that faulty reasoning. The reality is different from most people's expectations. This greatly affects weapon balance, particularly when looking at vehicles due to the active modules. Before you can talk about balancing vehicles against each other and infantry, you need to understand the details of this. Let me show you with a simple chart how knowing how damage works can help us and CCP spot imbalances before it's implemented, and how we can use it to build stronger fits for our dropships and avoid situations like 1.7's tanks. This chart shows a top level hardened incubus versus a heavy with an out of the box advanced assault forge gun. The side axis is the percentage of their health left, the bottom axis is the hit. For example, they both start here with 100% health. After they both hit each other once, the forge gunner, in beige, has 73% of his health remaining. The dropship, in red, has 81% of his health remaining. Here they've both shot each other twice. See how the forge gunner, the beige bar, has only 37% health left, while the dropship has 55 The next hit here, hit 3, shows that the forge gunner is killed, while the dropship has just survived. Look here at hit 5. This is where the dropship dies. This means that if the dropship misses twice, but the forge gunner hits with all shots, it takes five hits to kill the dropship with the assault forge gun. This is a balanced engagement. Look at it another way. 
two slopes falling at a similar rate. While the percentages are different, they fall in a similar fashion. In effect, a forge gun and this dropship can kill each other in a similar number of hits. However, aiming difficulties, some builds and the use of cover change these values, but in a hit-for-hit -hit engagement, the perfect storm, this is what a balanced engagement chart looks like when the intention is to have both parties able to fight each other one-on-one. -on -one. Compare that same gun, an advanced forge gun, against the cheapest and zero skill point requirement militia railgun tank running his free shield hardener. Does that look balanced? Not in the slightest. That is what an imbalance sheet looks like. The forge gun is dead in one hit, but look how the red bars keep going. Imagine the forge gunner lived as the rail kept missing. After the forge gunner hits a militia tank five times, that tank still has 26% of its health left. With the charge time factored, that's 18 seconds to kill an entry-level tank that can one-shot you. When you consider this is a non-skilled tank versus a skilled-up player, the imbalance is obvious. But look how changing a single factor affects things. Let's assume that the tank only ever hits with splash damage. Now the damage chart looks like this. Now that looks more balanced. But is this a realistic engagement? My point here is just to show you the difference between a balanced engagement sheet and an imbalanced one, and to show you that if you look at raw numbers only, you get different results than when you balance against different types of fights that factor in different abilities, such as aiming difficulty or cover. As you see, modelling damage, including factoring in region rates and resistances, gives us ways to more accurately assess balance. These charts show that a strong imbalance can be moved towards balance by changing a single factor, such as assuming that only splash damage hits the forger. The point I'm making is we need to think wider than damage in and total hit points. Many factors affect balance. Let's look at hardness as an example. I'll use another diagram and keep it nice and short, as I know this is not the most fascinating stuff. That said, however, once you have a better understanding, you can use this information to stay alive longer. And I'll give you an example of that. And I'll also give you examples of stronger builds based on this type of modelling. First though, let's remind ourselves how hardeners work. You're flying a python, it has 1,548 shields, and you've got a 50% shield hardener running. I'm using 50% as it's an easier number to understand. A forge gun hits you. That's 1,375 damage slamming into your shield. But how much damage do you take? Well, shields resist 10% of a forge gun's damage, and the hardener another 50%. You have a 50% shield hardener running, remember, and shields resist 10% of forge gun damage. How much is the incoming damage reduced by? Well, the hardener is 50% and the shields resist 10%, well, 10% of forge damage, so that's 60%, right? No, it's 55%. Wait, what? Why? And if we had two 50% hardeners running, what would it be then? 78%. Yeah, I know, it's not very obvious, is it? And this is why it's important when we discuss balance to understand this. So let's go through this nice and gently. Please stick with me here. This is mathy, but I'll use pictures and keep it simple. It is really important for vehicle users to understand this. It makes you a better pilot, makes you best able to fit fittings, and best able to use your fittings. This full pie represents your total shields. This bit, the 1375, is the forge gun hit. It's the hit we are reducing with the hardness and the resists, so we ignore this small bit here as it did not get hit. So this by here represents the forge gun shot at the moment it hits you, so the full circle represents 1,375 hit points of damage. But we know that the shield resist 10% of damage. That's 10% of this pie, which is 138 hit points. That's this bit. So this means so far, the 1,375 damage forge hit is reduced by 138. Now it only causes 1,238 damage, that's this bit, which is a good start. Next the hardeners come into play. The important thing here is that the hardeners only reduce damage on the portion of your shield that remains after the initial resistance has been removed. That was the bit worth 138 hit points. Before we can apply the hardeners, we need to remove the 10% reduction from the innate, so let's remove this chunk of the shields. This bit that's left represents 1,238 hit points of damage, but that's damage to the shields. It's this amount of the damage that we reduce by 50%, the amount of the first hardener. So let's cut this in half. So that's 50% of 1,238, which is 619. All three of these bits represent the forge gun shot itself before it was reduced. This bit is how much damage is removed by the innate resistance, and this bit is how much damage the first hardener removes. 
So that leaves this bit, which is how much the shot hits us for. In other words, how much damage is done to my shields by the forge hit. This bit, 138 hit points, added to this bit, 619, is 757. 757 is 55% of the forge gun hit. Like we said at the beginning, 55% damage reduction. But we're not done yet. Yeah, sorry, it's almost over. Please stick with me. You've made it this far. Let's assume now that we have two 50% harders running. What then? Two 50s is 100%, so does that mean we take no damage at all? I'm afraid not. Just like we did with the first hardener, we ignore these two segments, as we've already worked on them, and we just take this bit. Just like before, remember, the hardener we have fitted reduced damage by 50%. So we cut the remaining bit in half. So that second hardener reduces the hit on this bit here by 50%. That's 309 damage. Since that was our last hardener, this bit is how much damage that pesky forge gunner did. He expected to deal 1,375, but only did 309. Middle fingers up to the window, wave it at Mr. Forger. So how much of the forge gun damage is 309? It's 22%. So he did 22% damage of his initial hit. So how much was the damage reduced by? 78%. I hope you can see now why each harden does less and less for you. It's working on a small bit of pie every time. This means you can never make it to 100% resistance, because each time you're cutting the little bit you have left down by a percentage, and it gets smaller and smaller each time. So the more and more hardeners you add, the less effective they are. So there becomes a point where you shouldn't be adding any more hardeners because the amount of damage reduction they do becomes tiny. It gets more complicated when the shield is smaller than the amount that hit you. If a 1,500 hit point rail shot hits 1,000 shields, then the same rules are applied, but only to the 1,000 damage that hit the shield. Again, it's actually slightly more complicated than that, but I'm not going to go into it in too much more detail here because I don't think we need to. We also have to factor in other factors like the damage modifiers attached to the forge gun that increase the damage. The reason I explained all this to you so you can see the function of shields and damage is not intuitive. What you expect to happen often is not the way things unfold. This leads all of us to make mistakes in our builds, and especially when talking about balance. A double hardened python resists 87% of swarm damage, which is not the figure most people use when talking about balance issues. However, it's using these models that we can take a serious look at balance which we need to do because a double hardened python takes 169 damage from a proto swarm. And that seems a bit off to me. So let's take a look at a few balance issues using a model. Have a look at one small section of my model sheet. I factor in damage per hit, innate resistance to both shields and armour, bonus damage to shields and armour, the time between hits, the regen rate of shields, armour regen, shield delay, hardeners, a lot more. The results have been compared to control situations and real battles, and the results match both well enough for me to use the model to look at builds and, more importantly, balance. I'll just use the simple charts, as they give a decent picture without needing to go into the math. Remember the two extremes of balance versus imbalance. These two. Let's quickly look at a few charts and see what we get. Here's a single hardened python with top repping skills versus malicious swarms. Note this is with them coming in thick and fast every two seconds. Yeah, that needs fixing. What about a proto breach forge gun with a damage mod and proficiency level 3 versus the top pilot in a python with a hardener? By top pilot I mean he has high level skills in all of those abilities that reduce recharge time and increase the skills that make his python stronger. That's a three hit kill allowing for shield regen, and the forge gunner wins every round. Let's put that great forge against an out of the box militia hardened Galente hull with a blaster turret. I factored the tank's DPS based on the forge gun's charge time. Hmm. That's the best forge gun with level 3 proficiency and a 10% damage mod against the weakest tank that can be used, and they kill each other in about the same amount of time. That's not balanced. So let's fix it. A militia tank against a proto breach like that should say go down in two shots. Let's up the breach gun's damage to do that. There we go. Fixed. As you can see, the tank is destroyed in two hits and the forge gun lasts about twice as long. That seems pretty balanced considering it's a proto versus militia. But what's this? 
that buff to the best forge to balance it into a two-shot on the weakest tank turned it into one-hit kill on the best python, i.e. drop ship with extra shields and a hardener and max pilot skills. Do you see the problem? Fixing tanks by buffing AV to tank levels will ruin drop ships, lavs and even installation balance. Before you start calling for buffs to this or that, you need to consider the other types of player that weapon will be used against. Just using damage or total hit points will not work with such varied vehicles using the same modules. Other factors are needed. For example, if we buff just the dropship's hardener resistance to forge shots by about half the percentage we buff the forge guns, then we get these charts. The top one here is a new buffed forge gun against the militia tank, and this bottom one is the same buffed weapon against dropships, but with the dropship getting greater resistance to forge shots, or greater resistance than the tanks, but no changes to their resistance against swarms or other weapons. Note this is just an example. By buffing dropships and labs resistance against certain weapons, we could even use meta level for this, we can tweak balance more finely. And this is my point. We cannot balance using current modules and resistances when different vehicle classes use those very same resistances. We need more variables. My last point is that do not make this mistake when talking balance on the forums or just calling for a buff to this or an HP rise in that. It just tips the imbalance from one spot to another. Balance AV only on damage against tanks and you break the other vehicles. Balance using HP or shields and you break certain weapons. How can we fix this? Consider other existing variables and adjust those, such as splash damage. Add new variables such as capacitors. Give drop suits active modules, increase current module stacking penalties. Create modules specifically for aerial or ground vehicles. Use meta level of both AV and vehicles to adjust damage. There are many, many ways to work on this and this video is really not about those. The takeaway from this is that you must look beyond damage and hit points when talking balance. It's only a tiny part of the picture. Think broadly, not in the narrow. You have been judged.